All right, guys, welcome back to Just Carve Rob. And what are we carving today? Well, we're going to carve a rabbit. Could carve a rabbit. A rabbit in an egg. All right? All right. So, uh, we're going to be using the Dremel 4000. We're also going to be using the micro motor. And we're going to be using a little bit of uh, knife work here. Knife, yep, this is one I made. Knife. Okay, so uh, first thing I'm going to do, is you can see I cut this out. This is a four inch block of wood. It's an inch and three quarters from the top to the ears. The ears are... Uh, just over half inch wide. You can make them any thickness you want. We'll be splitting them here. This will be the body of the, uh, rabbit. So, uh, pick whatever side's going to be your front. I think, uh, this will be our front side. So, I'm going to find my pencil, wherever it be. There it is. So, I wasn't even looking on the right side of the table. And I'm going to come up from the bottom. Uh, yeah, let's say uh, three quarters of an inch. Okay. Three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to come down here uh, about half of an inch say yeah something like that okay so what I, I'm gonna do first I'm gonna get rid of these sharp corners so they don't hurt my hands you can use your Dremel uh, I just like using the knife for this because I can take off a lot of wood in one shot. Like that. Okay, now from there, it's all about you see we got that egg shape here. So for the rest, it's all about getting this to that egg egg shape, right? So I guess uh first thing we'll do is go ahead and mark in where those ears are gonna be. About the same over on this side. They don't got to be perfect. It's not rocket science. Should be using my other knife for this. It's a little bit longer. This is an OCC knife. Two and a half inches long. Well. Yeah, two and a half inches long. OCC offers knives in many, many, many uh, lengths and shapes. See, we're kind of using a slicing cut here. Like that. Just kind of mark that in where we want it. Kind of like that there. And then I'm going to mark it right here too. I think these are going to be where I'm going to put some feet. Give our rabbit some feet here. Come over on this side.
do the same thing. Kind of mark that in. And then we can commence with a rounding over. We've already put our center lines in here. And I think I'm going to give this rabbit a tail. Like that. Just kind of draw it in there. So I want to make sure I leave this area for a tail. So I'm just going to go through here with my knife. Because I want to make sure I leave this wood alone while we're doing the getting it all shaped in round. I want to make sure I leave enough wood on there for his little tail. Don't got to be a perfect circle. Just leave a fluffy little tail behind. Something like that there. Just want to get it, uh, get this little piece of real estate reserved for a tail. So that's all I'm doing. Just, uh, roughing it in there. Everything's rough. Okay, so now we can start rounding. I don't know if these feet will stay or not, but um, yeah, I don't know if they're. I don't know if the feet are going to stay there or not. So. I'm just uh, throwing a spitball and throwing throwing stuff against the wall, see what sticks, right? See if we can work those feet in or not. I don't know yet. Work on getting this uh, egg shape going here. I know you guys, uh, a lot of you guys watch Doug Linker too. And I know you've seen... You guys have probably seen his video on his little rabbits he made. Egg and an egg. So that's what we're going to do. And we'll see how they come out. Hopefully better than my first attempt. You guys want to see my first attempt at this rabbit? It, it totally went off the rails from what I was going for. But this is what the first one came out looking like. <laughs> yeah, he, he totally went off the rails, this guy. But, yeah. And we carved a chicken. Little chicken guy. Didn't make no video on this. I made a video on this. This guy. But I didn't make a video on this guy. Alright, so, uh. We'll get the uh, Dremel fired up. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll just take an easy day and very relaxing carving with uh, a knife. I know I, I used to have some knife carvers. I don't know if they still watch or not. We started getting heavy into the power carving last year. But believe me, I do still enjoy knife carving. I, I find it very relaxing. And uh, with my back the way it's been, I haven't been able to get out, out here to the wood carving shop that much. Like that little chicken guy, I carved him inside. In, a re in my recliner. And uh, was just taking it easy. So you can see the whole thing is uh, 
we're just rounding getting this whole thing rounded up here so we'll be swapping back and forth between uh, the knife and the Dremel maybe maybe we'll use a Dremel well we'll probably use the Dremel but you can see how much wood you can take off with a knife right just big old chunks chunks of wood Just going to try keeping this this guy uh, as simple as we can. I don't think we're going to give him hands. Or... I mean, right now, if you wanted to put hands in, now would be the time to do it. To put the hands in. Because uh, you still got all this wood that you still got to round this over. So if you wanted to put hands in, now would be the time to do it. But let's, let's just do a... Make this guy... Uh, a simple little egg rabbit. It's nice and simple little egg type guy. Now when you're coming down on your, your wood with a knife, like cutting this V in, you got to be careful because I tell you this, uh, it, won't, it don't take much to split this. And this is our uh, inch and three quarter by inch and three quarter by four inch uh, buy it at Menards Home Depot they all sell these uh, basically carving basic carving block kits I guess you'd call them so when you're taking out you're cutting straight down with the green it wants it will split on you if, you, if I tried just pushing straight down on this, this would split like you hit it with an axe. So, uh, be careful of that. And I don't push straight in. I'm using a slicing cut here. I'm pulling the knife back. Right, like that. See how I'm sliding the knife? Gives me more control. And I'm not worried, worried that much about it uh, cracking down the middle on me. But yeah, if you took if if you just push straight down on this, you it, you could end up splitting it and getting your hand. Uh, Dremel's always a safe way to go. Doing this, uh, these cuts, you're going against the grain, way against the grain. Always make sure your hand's comfortable too. Don't try contorting your hand into a position that is not comfortable. See, like that, I'm pushing. I shouldn't be doing that. I should always be have that knife under control where I can stop it. And when you're cut, you're carving like this. You're pretty safe because your hand will only cl only close so far. But now pushing, see, you only got it right there by them fingers. That's not a good idea. See, if I went like that, so I'm better off coming in like that. i just trying to even this V up more to the center line here. Like that. Okay. See, it's hard to get that grip. I have to turn them over. Come back like this. Same thing on this side. looking all right get rid of these sharp edges man really look at that ow splinter 
really digging into your hand, really digging into my hand. Them sharp corners. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and just work on rounding this guy over here. Got your center lines in. Just gonna go round to the center line. Of course, we're putting the uh, skinny part of the egg at the top. So, just keep working that over. And like I said, if you want to give them hands, now's the time to uh, draw them in. And you're going to want to leave that that piece of that bit of wood alone, or start carving the hands in. See, I'm just going to put hands on them right there. I would actually start cutting, I'd give them an arm right here, and then I'd bring the hand over. You could have them holding the flower or something. See, just like that. Then this would be the bottom part. We'd bring that down right to there. Actually, we could bring it right along with that foot. And then we could give them some big, funny rabbit fingers, right? Something like that. Something like this guy. Got them big, round rabbit fingers. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. Let's uh, get this guy shaped up. I'm really, enjo I'm really enjoying this process with the knife. I know. You guys with the Dremels are like, come on, man. We don't want to spend all day watching you uh, carve something with a knife. And that's, that's you know, that's probably the main reason why I I do a lot more Dremel carving than uh, whittling anymore. It's for the time. You know, to make a start to finish whittling video, you're looking at probably an hour and a half, two hours. Depending on what you're carving. Something simple like this old rabbit is probably going to be a... An hour long video. You know. That's what I'm thinking. Now I could. Uh, I can speed it up. And cut it down to about 40 minutes I guess. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish shaping this guy up so you guys don't got to sit there and uh, be in agony watching it. I'll be right back. And with the magic of editing, it'll only take a second. All right. So here we are with the dreaded voiceover. And we're still using the knife and we're separating his ears. Going to separate the ears out. Uh, yep. So we're going to separate the ears. Give a shout out to George Johnson over Carve Infusion. The uh, BAP over there at uh, I Can Carve. He's over in Ireland. And all the great su subscribers and uh, viewers of uh, the Just Carve Rob channel. I appreciate you. See, we sped up the, uh, the carve here. Uh, I was wrong. Earlier, I said it only take me about an hour. It ended up taking uh, over two hours to carve this little guy. Guess I'm just not as fast as Doug Linker. But, what are you going to do? You do what you do, right? Uh, so, most of this ended up being a whittling video. Uh, I did use the uh, Dremel and stuff on this, but man, is this wood fuzzy. Fuzzy was, he had a hair. An egg rabbit. Get it? Hair? Rabbit? Rabbit hair? Nah, nah, nah. So, uh, yep. Getting his feet marked in. We are putting feet on this guy. So, that's what we're doing there. Just getting the, the feet marked in. Because we got to carve his butt round. Or the egg round. And so we're going to leave his feet stick out from the egg. 
Brown the egg. Yep, he's going to be in an egg. I think we'll name him Egbert. Egbert, where's my coffee? There it is. All right. Got some coffee on board. Getting this guy all shaped up here. Somerset Whittler. Yep. That was right. My last video, I didn't know if it was Somerset or Summer Rest, but Somerset. S O M E R S E T. Got to check that guy out. Great carver he is. Way better than just Carve Rob, I can tell you that. Uh, there's a new guy. I don't know how to. Well, he really isn't new now. He's already blown fat past the uh, 4,000 subscriber mark. Um, I think his name is D. Diddle, something like that. He's a heck of a carver. He's carving uh, all kinds of stuff, chickens and people and all kinds of things over there. Let's not forget our buddy uh, Dan Carprio, C-A-R-P-I-O, Dan Carprio, just carved the cowboy. Uh, refrigerator magnet. Awesome. So uh, go check out Dan's videos over there. Uh, he's a whittler. He's got, he's all uh, knife carving. Dan Carprio. So now you can see we've cut the one ear down. Because we're going to give the ear a flop. Or a flip, a flip flop. So we had to make it lower than the other ear. You just want to kind of eyed that up so that uh, if you were to straighten that ear out, it'd be the same height as the other ear. Or you could do a double flop. Flip on the flop of the rabbit's ear. That's why we've cut that one ear down on that little bit of an angle there. We're going to give it a little bit of a flop over. And we're running at uh, two and a half times normal speed. If only I could really carve that fast. Yep. So me and the shop inspector are out in the shop today. We made it out here, finally. I don't know how long we can handle being out here, but we're out here. What is up with this weather? I'll tell you, Michigan. One minute, it's sunshine. Next minute, it's snowing. We've had snow for the last three days here. On and off. And uh, Monday it was 17 degrees. Or Sunday. Sunday it was 17 degrees. Yesterday was uh, 15 degrees. Today it's only supposed to be in like low 30s. And then by uh, middle of the week, it's supposed to be back up into 60. Around 60. With rain. Man. Need the cold, uh, need this cold weather to finally say goodbye and leave. See you next fall. Now we're, uh, you can see we're getting the flip, the, the over the flop on the ear there, the flip flop on the ear. This is a long video. I'm probably gonna not be able to talk for 15 minutes after I get done recording this video. Doing the voiceover on this video. Which will probably be a blessing to anybody that knows me. Oh, oh wow, he's finally shut up. Yeah. Guy never stops talking. He's always talking to himself out there. Well, actually, they don't know that I'm talking to you guys. So what's going on in the world? Who knows? It's a crazy, it's getting crazier and crazier every day, isn't it? Inflation, gas prices. Man, oh man, can't afford to go nowhere. Can't afford to buy nothing. Went to the store the other day. And uh, gas was up to four twenty nine a gallon and a box of Fruit Loops was 7 bucks. Holy mackerel. Yeah. 
There goes the shop inspector. Went from one chair to another. It is, yeah, it's, the weather is just craziness. Everything's going crazy, though. So I hope y'all are doing well. I hope it's a lot warmer where you are than where I am. Say hi to Sean Brooks over at Pen on Fire and Wood Carving. Sean Brooks. And don't forget to go check out uh, Carving Fusion World of Wood Carvers. Original. On Facebook. A lot of uh, great artists there. It's, uh, if you're on Facebook, it's a, a good carving group to join. And uh, Gene Messer. He's uh, the godfather of flat planes wood carving. Gene Messer. It's, uh, does a lot of whittling. And you can see we're shaping up that ear, the other ear. We're, we're leaning one ear forward and one ear back. That's what we're doing there. That's why we took so much uh, wood off that front ear. That's why uh, in the beginning I said leave, make your ears about a half inch thick. That way there you can uh, wiggle them around a little bit. You know, they don't have to be perfectly parallel. It, it gives, a, I think gives a little character having like one ear forward, one ear back. It also makes it a little easier to carve the ears because they're not on the same plane. See, there goes my voice. <clears throat> They're not on the same plane, so I think it makes it a little easier to carve them when the you got them kind of twisted a little bit. Now we're putting the uh, center cut in. It's going to plunge in with a knife, go straight down. And pop that chip out of there. There you go. On the other rabbit, I uh, use the Dremel and the Cutsaw Flame Burr to uh, shape the ear in. Work pretty good. Get a little bit deeper with the knife. I call this the pencil hold. <laughs> the pencil hold on the knife. Hold it like a pencil. Probably not the best hold in the world. Uh, for a knife. But I used to do that all the time with the X-Acto knives. It worked out pretty good. Worked out okay. You see we're just lopping that wood out of the ears. You can always come back and sand it. Or uh, just make, got a problem with the wood here. It's like the uh, grain has changed direction. You go one way and it cuts fine. And then you start going that same way and the knife wants to dig in. Uh, you just have to turn the knife around and go the other way. But usually, it, like, to me, it always happens right in the middle of a long cut. Like doing these ears. See how I had to turn the knife over? Uh, right there, I got to go from each way because right there in the center of that ear... The wood kind of changes direction. The way the uh, the, the wood is, uh, the grain the wood's running. So if I just tried pushing that all the way up through there, it probably would have took a big split out of the ear. So, yeah, I had to change directions. And you'll find that when you're carving with a knife. Not so much uh, power carving. The power carving doesn't really care which way the grain the wood's running. But it does, uh, well, it does, because you'll notice uh, if you start, if the rotation of your cutter is going against the grain of the wood, you'll, you'll really start getting a lot of fuzz. And that's the problem I was having with uh, this bass wood. It was, it was so fuzzy, you couldn't even see what you were cutting. So I'd have to stop and go over it with the knife to get, like, shave the fuzz off the rabbit so I could see what I was actually carving. The other rabbit, uh, the, the crazy looking rabbit, the one the one that went off the rails there, he was done uh, probably, I want to say 90% with a, a Dremel and the micro motor. But the problem I was having is it was getting so doggone fuzzy, I couldn't even tell what I was cutting. Now, that's pretty fuzzy. I probably should have soaked it down with uh, some alcohol and water to uh, keep it from fuzzing up so bad. But yeah, I had to keep going over that with the... Uh, with a knife just so I could flatten it out to see where I was. You'll see what I'm talking about. We have the uh, 
cut saw. I believe that's the gold burr in there. And we're doing some shaping. Or the silver, silver burr, I'm sorry. Uh, which is the cut saw, of course. And for some reason, my camera got bumped. And I didn't notice it until I started the editing process that a lot of this footage is way down at the bottom of the screen. So, I apologize for that one. And, uh... Just using this uh, cuts all burr to try getting everything rounded over a little bit better. That's that's what we're doing there. Smooth it out, get it round. Look at the fuzz on that wood. Get it all smoothed over and round it over. See, we're getting that egg shape going there. Yep, getting rounded over. Oh, that's Jordy. Hi, Jordy. He's pedinging me. I forgot to put my... My, uh... Computer thing on airplane mode. Okay, so now we got the, uh... A Dremel with the... Flap wheel, I guess. Emery cloth. To, uh, get it sanded down. Even with the sander, this stuff is, uh, fuzzy. This is, is, uh... 120 grit. Uh, emery cloth and we'll just kind of get everything shaped up there and we'll take the knife and go back around and detail the tail hopefully we don't cut it off and detail them get it detailed the detail if you cut the tail off he's detailed but if you're doing final final cuts it's detail so you don't want to detail detail the tail right off the guy What happened to your rabbit? Well, I de was detailing it. Well, what'd you cut his tail off for? No, not that kind of detail. Okay, so where his tail's popped out there, we're going to make the egg sh the eggshell broke looking. And then we'll make it broke looking or going around the top. You guys know how this works. I think you guys have seen a few of these uh, running around the internet. And we have a diamond burr, needle diamond burr, in the microcarver. And we're using that to um, create a, a, a... Oh, come on, Rob. We're using that to create the... What do you call it? Dead stop? Yeah, well... It's going to be our stop line. And we're just going to go around his foot. Hope we don't uh, cut too deep and defeat him. It's terrible when you get defeated. Using the knife for doing the uh, cleanup. And then we'll come back in and we will stop line. That's what it's called. We'll, come, we'll uh, run our knife right up to the stop line. To give it a good crisp uh, stop cut. Yep. So I would put it in there. And that will make the eggshell stick out further than the rabbit. I, th I was thinking about going the other way. And have the rabbit stick out over the eggshell to make it look like he was fluffy and, and he was pop just puffed out hanging over the eggshell. But I went this way. I might do one like that though, just to see what it looks like. Go the opposite way. Instead of cutting the rabbit down into the eggshell, cut the eggshell up into the rabbit. So it makes like the fur of the rabbit's hanging out over the eggshell. I thought that'd be a pretty cool idea. And uh I don't know. So, you can see where, even with the sandpaper, this wood still fuzzed up. So, I'm going to get a smoother finish just running over it with the knife. And a knife gives the wood some facets, and it really lets, it, lets everybody know that it is hand-carved rabbit. So, you'll see me run around here and defuzz the rabbit.
But it's a rabbit. It's supposed to be fuzzy. And not when you're carving it. You can go back and refuzz it up later if that's the way you want it. You know, if that's what if you want a fuzzy rabbit, and that's that's all on you. I'm just uh doing it my way here. And I did it my way. Alright, so we're gonna put a flame burr diamond in there and try bringing that rabbit down a little bit. Bring its butt down so that its the eggshell is uh, proud of the rabbit's behind. Make it proud. The rabbit's proud of his behind. No, his behind's proud of the egg. No, the egg's proud of his behind. Yeah, that's it. We'll get it figured out. So I'm going go through with this uh, flame burr here, and I'm adding some cracks to the egg. Chinks in the armor. Adding some cracks to the eggshell. And then we'll come through with the wood burner and uh, we'll darken everything up. We'll wood burn it. Sign it. Remember to sign your work, guys. Sign it. There it is. All signed. Don't got enough room to put 2022, so I'm just going to put 22. Just like that. You can see how we get, made the shell look like it was broke around its tail. Okay, so now we've put that upside down. Let's just call it a nail head. Nail head diamond, because that's what it looks like. A nail head. It's a nail head diamond burr in there. I'm not really sure what the real name of it is. I've been calling it an inverted cone burr. Inverted cone burr. Um... But, yeah, it really looks like a nail head. Oh, what are you talking about, shop inspector over there moaning and groaning? What do you like better, in inverted nail head? Or inverted cone burr or nail head? She's looking at me like I'm nuts. All right, so there he is, the rough out. Let's put the center line back in. We're getting close to being done. Only a few more minutes, like 10 of them. So we've got that, uh, this is actually a needle, a needle carbide burr. Needle carbide burr. Kind of like uh, the diamond burr, but this is carbide and it's only got the uh, long flute. So it is an aluminum cutting needle diamond. Or needle carbide burr. I'm sorry. So we're uh, shaping his toes with it. Getting them cut in. And then we'll come back with, I believe, a diamond football burr. Yep, a little diamond football burr. And we'll get them all shaped up. That's what we're doing there. Shaping his little toes in. And we'll undercut the bottoms of them to make him stand proud of his uh, foot. The bottom part of his foot. That's what we're doing there. Getting that all shaped in. I was going to separate this into different uh, parts of a video. But I just decided we're just going to do it. We're going to give them the whole thing. We're just going to put the whole thing out there. It's probably going to take me two days to upload this from my house. Because I believe my internet is uh, delivered by Gopher. They carry it in little buckets underground. And it takes forever. Because this uh, video is going to be an hour. Close to an hour long. So you can see how we're rounding the toes in. Using that... Uh, Diamond football burr, we use use this a lot, diamond football burr. We use it a lot on just about every little project. Yep. But you can see even that little diamond football burr, how fuzzy that wood's getting compared to over there where on the on the right hand side where we use the knife to clean it up. See we're putting in we're carving deeper, Jordy. Carving deep. Making them toes, to little toes stick right out there. 
And there he is. Got his little feet, little toes. Guess I could have made the toes, the toes part a little bit shorter uh, part of the video. But is what it is. Now we run through the razor tip wood burner. And we're getting that all cut in. Creating the uh, spot for the paint to go to. So that whatever color we paint the rabbit doesn't get mixed in with the eggshell of the eggshell. We'll probably be using the color eggshell to paint the eggshell. Burn around the tail. I just like the way the wood burner uh, makes everything pop. And it lets you guys uh, actually see, because, you know, carbon white wood, a lot of times, uh, doesn't stand out that way, that well, when you're showing it. You know, you're showing the carving. It's like, it doesn't stand out that well when its background is itself. So yep, the I, the wood burner also helps get rid of any fuzzy lines that you may have, like the flop of that ear. Even if you do it with a knife, if you uh, have to make more than one pass, sometimes you'll get like uh, double cut lines. Well, the nice thing about the wood burner is you can go right in there and burn them out. So we're gonna put a round nose on this guy. And I happen to have the perfect tool for this. Uh, it's a eye cutter that my friend Pete Blair, the mad scientist, made and sent to me uh, quite a while ago. And whenever I get a chance to use it for eyes or noses or whatever, I use it. It saves me car uh, whittling time, right? So you can see I took my other knife and I went up there and I marked uh, the top of the nose with the knife. You can see it. See him a little chevron, that little chevron there right above his nose. That's where his eyes are going to be. And uh, that will not be above the nose for very long. Let's, let's put it that way. So we're going to plunge the tip of the knife in at about a 10 degree angle. And then come back and with a slicing cut, slice that off there. Just like that. Now that's, there's, there's his eyes. That's where his eyes are going to be. Right there. And we're uh, putting the uh, eye shelf in, so that's going to be flat. Giving this guy some cartoon eyes. You don't have to. You can just paint two little dots there. Uh, I think it'll look just as good. I just like the cartoon eyes, so that's what I'm putting in them. Some cartoon eyes. And he gives them a little cheek. Gives them a little cheek there, too. And if you notice, uh, when you cut your eye, eye shelf in like that, if one eye is a little bit bigger than the other eye, you can always, like I just did there, see that? Taking a little bit more off the sides to... Uh, Make the eyes the same size. Because sometimes uh, when you carve something, it isn't perfectly round, you know. So your eye, it may, when you're cutting flats on it, it may vary in the uh, width of the eye. But you can always come back and just take a little more off the side. And that will create, make the eyes the same size. Always a way to fix it, guys. Now we're going to put the uh, the little... I don't know what you call it. It's part of his nose, I guess. Right? That little split upper lip. Is that what it's? I don't know what you call it on a rabbit. Okay, so we're going to poke that knife in deep. Straight in to the nose. And then uh, that little three-way chip cut. One. And we'll do it again there. Cutting it in deeper. Put cut a little V in there, and I will undercut that mouth like that. Take that chip out of there. 
Put that little uh, doo-wop thing there on the side of his mouth. Little undercut thing right there. To uh, make his, like, you know, that's where his mouth stops. I guess it would uh, delineate. Right, Ben? Ben over at Studio on the Lake. Hey, we haven't had said hi to Ben today. Hi, Ben. Studio on the Lake. So we're doing a little undercut there. What are you talking about, Shout Inspector? Oh, oh go sit down in your chair. I can't help it. I can't help it if you don't like it. Well, I'm, I know you're the shop inspector, but still, come on with a criticism. Yep, she's always telling me about it. Okay, so you can see we got the mouth cut in there. And now we're going to put his little buck teeth in. Kind of going to kind of make them, uh, we're not bringing them straight down. We're doing a little bit of an angle there. I think uh, you make the teeth a little goofy looking, and I think it adds character to them. So they don't got to be perfect, right? Because like on mine here, one tooth, his, he's got a little bit of a crooked smile going there. I don't care. I think it looks funny. That's the whole thing about this. If it don't look funny, you know. Who ever seen a rabbit in an egg? We all know rabbits don't come from eggs. Rabbits come from chickens. No. <laughs> nope. Uh, so, yeah. Got his little, little toothy smile carved in there. I can't help it if you don't like rabbits. Shop inspectors tell me all about it. Get pretty lippy. Pretty lippy over there, shop inspector. And now we're just kind of rounding everything over. Cleaning it up. So you can see. <laughs> that goofy little guy, huh? Goofy little rabbit. I cut them teeth in a little bit deeper. Make them stick out a little bit more. Now we're putting a little V cut in there to uh, separate the teeth. And well, I mean, I, I'm getting a little carried away here. Doing, I'm rounding the teeth over, taking the sharp edges off the teeth. Yeah, you know, who cares? It's just a goofy little rabbit. It's, it's not like ever, anybody's ever going to see this guy again, right? You know, we'll draw the little eyes in there where they're going to be. And then we'll take our little poke. Uh, we're going to separate the eyes. We're not going to just do a straight cut. There's going to be a little bit of wood. A little sliver of wood between the eyes. I found that I like that better than just having a straight line. I mean, don't get me wrong. Just putting a little straight line in there and rounding the eyes over into each other is okay. Um, I don't know. I just like having that little separation between them. That's just me. Just my opinion, what I like to do. Okay, so we did a three-way cut, and we're taking a chip out of the corner. And now we're tracing around the outside of the eye with the pointy part of the knife. Um, you'll find that the pointier the knife you have, the easier you can go around corners with it. Okay, this knife with that upswept uh, deal on it. It's very pointy and very thin, so it goes around corners pretty good. Now, my other knife, my OCC knife, um, has a wider end on the blade. Now, I thought about grinding that down and making it more pointy for going around corners, but this one works okay. It's just the uh, with the straight blade on the OCC, it's a little more, it's a little easier to follow, track the, the end of your knife because you don't got to calculate in that. The sweep, how the knife is swept up. You don't have to calculate that in when you're trying to get that chip out of there. That's why this side is being a pain. The other side, no problem. Popped right out easy. This side being a little more of a pain. And now we're rounding over his nose. Yeah, we could have made the nose deeper, but it is what it is. Rounding that over. 
I think his face came out okay. And we're going to cut those uh, the eyes in a little bit deeper. And round all that over. Like that. Got to get these guys painted up. Getting way too many carvings sitting around here with no paint on them. So I think it's time to do some painting. I think so, yep. And finally, we're down to the last three minutes. Hooray! No more voiceover. It'll be done. Cleaning up that nose. Rounding that, I guess it'd be a cheek. Round his cheek up. Getting that rounded over up to the eye. Back in there playing with that eyeball. Get, making it a little more round on the inside. That's what we're doing there. Using the tip of the knife and going around the uh, eye to, to make it round. Right, to round it over. Not, it's not a flat eye. It's You can actually see the contour of the eye. Like that. Get the, Dig that out of the corner. That little three-way chip cut. Uh, really makes it deep. You can really make it deeper. See right there? One, two, three. Pop out the chip. And then push it back. And we're doing the same thing there. A little three-way into the corner of that eye. And now we might as well uh, clean that up to his ears. Do little swoop cuts. Put some eyebrows on them. They were taking that rolling that. That's another nice thing about having this uh, swept knife, is with that thin point at the end, it's easier to make them scoop or swoop, swoop or scoop cuts or whatever you want to call them. We're putting that, doing a little three-way cut there between his eyes. Pop that chip out, give it, make it stand out a little bit. So he's got eyebrows. See, we're doing that swoop cut using the end of the knife. A little swoopy swoopy there. And whatever we're not creating a hard line above his eye. Just uh, do a little push and swoop. And share, subscribe, and like. Make sure you hit that bell uh, and hit all for notifications on any other videos that we're putting up. Man, this video was long. Uh, if you stayed to the end, thank you very much. Uh, or if you skipped to the end, I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoyed the process. Uh, we had some fun. And we will catch you guys on the next one. Stay safe and just carve. Carve every day if you can. Be awesome. Carve something awesome. And we'll catch you on the next one. All right. All right. Bye-bye. See you later.